to invite Dr. Jerry Brown, who is the medical director of ELW Hospital, and one of Time Magazine's presidents of the year. Madam President, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Before saying anything, I would like us to please observe a few seconds of silence for the gallant men and women, health workers especially, at the hands of the border. Madam President, thank you for the honor to stand here and give a testimony on our experience as health workers during this fight. I urge you to please give me a little over two minutes. The beginning was difficult. We knew nothing much, nothing much about Ebola. But yet, a couple of health workers were sent to Lofa County when we first had the outbreak. And knowing little or nothing about Ebola, they managed to continue it in that sector of the country. They never had the expertise, but yet, they made use of the available resources and continued the fight from that end. I remember vividly, it was on June 12, when the Minister of Health Destiny, Dr. Bernice Dan, called me and asked and said, Dr. Brown, do you still have the holding unit you set up at the hospital? And I just entered an emergency surgery when she made this call about 6 p.m. that afternoon, that evening. And I said to her, yes, madam, we do have the holding unit available. She said, we have two patients that we think are probable cases. Can we bring them over? Having consulted with my colleagues, I then called her back and said, yes, madam, send the patients over and we'll see how best we can help. By then, our chapel had been transformed into an ETU because there was no available shelter. But I continue to ask myself a question that I want us all to ask ourselves today. What is an ETU? It's just a shelter. So I don't know why we were looking out for big structures. We had several empty structures around. And so she brought in the two patients, and they were admitted. But what happened in the first two or three weeks where we were waiting for another patient to die so as to bring in another person who was in the community? Because the first set of patients were all died. It was not until after two weeks when we had our first survivor, who was a 12-year-old kid. Thereafter, the death toll continued to increase. Our next plan, in collaboration with the head of case management, Honorable Nenswa, one of our representatives, was to engage the community and see how we could build larger structures. But when we engage the community, the response we got from some of our fellow Liberians was, take these people to the evil forest. Do not build an ETU in the capital. That was the first time I shared tears. Because people could not see what was ahead. And it behooved me to say, what will we do next? But praise God, today, that very community was a champion in the fight. Because they later, later on made available the site we requested for. 
and there is where the largest ETU ever built was constructed. Thanks to the EOWA community. Madam President, while we are rejoicing today that we don't have any keys available, there were a lot of things that happened behind the scene, one of which was stigmatization that affected most of the health workers. There were some health workers whose spouses put them out because they chose to work in the ETU. Some of us had to undress in our garages before entering our houses. Or because there was no way that health workers working in the ETU could isolate themselves to protect their families. So it was not only our lives that was at risk, but our very family to whom we returned having worked in the ETU. And I hope this will be a lesson learned, that in time to come, we concentrate on such. I remember one of the younger medical doctors I took in the house, I mean in the ETU, was put out of his own father's house because he chose to work in the ETU. But as I reflect on what we went through, we all never knew about what was happening. That is why we had so much challenges. Even to get help workers on board was difficult. Why? Because of the fear of the unknown. I often put, it, put the picture like this. We found ourselves in a warfare. And any military personnel who has not wound a military jacket before. If you are asked to stand up front and allow another soldier to fire at you, you will not easily stay up front to allow your colleague to fire at you. That's the situation we help work up on ourselves in when they say, put on the PPE, go into the ETU, you will be protected. What guarantee was there that indeed we get, we protect, we're protecting ourselves by wearing the PPE? But someone had to stand up with the ghost and say, no, I think we can make it. And having done that, we saw many other work, health workers coming on board. Today, we have so many. Let me say thanks to the ordinary Liberian people in, this, in our society, the businessmen. When we had challenges in finding clothing for our patients, and we made a fervent appeal on the radio. We saw ordinary people coming in with clothes, coming in with beddings, coming in with water, coming in with juices, not knowing who was infected or who was sick. And that's one thing I want to say a big thanks to our fellow Liberians for for joining us during the fight. I know you want your time, I know you think the times will be over. Uh, there are so much to continue saying, Madam President, about our experiences. But the most difficult time I, as an individual, had during this fight was when my cook got infected. The week from October 18 to the end of the month was more traumatizing than any other time in my entire life. There was a time I had a dream, seeing myself, my wife, and kids lying in the ETU. My cook got infected. But praise God, the same uh, message we taught at the hospital we also pass it on in our home. And that's one thing I often told my workers. Whatever we taught you here at the hospital or here at the unit, teach your families. Because if you don't teach them, you kept the knowledge only to yourself, they too will get infected and will blame you for doing such. Today, we want to give glory to God that none of our nurses 
died to Ebola from the hospital as a result of the fight, and not one ETU worker died to Ebola as a result of the fight. To God be the glory. There are more to be said, but there is one lesson I hope we all will learn from this fight. May we all learn to make use of the available resources while we sit and look out for help. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Um, Your Excellency President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Your Excellency President For Nyasimbe of the Republic of Togo, distinguished guests of the Republic of Liberia, all other protocols respectfully observed. President Donald Kabaruka, the management and staff of the African Development Bank extend their heartfelt congratulations to you, Madam President, to the people of the Republic of Liberia and their partners in the fight. On Liberia being declared Ebola free by WHO on Saturday, May 9, 2015. Madam President, please ac also accept our deepest condolences for all the good people that Liberia lost to the fight against the EVD. Your Excellency, even in Liberia's darkest moments during the fight, you never forgot your neighbors, Guinea and Sierra Leone. Today, our prayers are with them also that they too should reach this point soon because only a regional approach will truly rid Liberia of the dreaded monster. You have consistently cautioned the people of Liberia about the bittersweet nature of this victory. Recently, medical evidence shows that the Ebola virus still remains in parts of the body such as the eyes and in semen, even when the blood no longer tests positive for the virus. We must therefore remain vigilant and maintain surveillance. As far as the African Development Bank is concerned, we were able to triple our support to the three affected countries during the epidemic, enabling our partners such as WHO, the AU, and ECOWAS to respond effectively when called upon to do so. As Africa's premier development finance institution, the bank will support the economic stabilization recovery plan jointly with UNDP, the World Bank, and the EU. And we will continue our support for the agenda for transformation. But the key word here is urgency. Everything we need to do must be done with greater urgency than ever so that we build resilient infrastructures, build resilient institutions, and quality technical and managerial capacities among Liberians to prepare for any eventuality. May Liberia never again feel such pain. Thank you. Madam President, Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, people of Liberia, since Saturday, the whole world has been celebrating together with you. And uh, from Europe, from Brussels, the Commissioner for Humanitarian Affairs and our special Ebola coordinator has sent a special message. And I'm going to share this special message with you. This is great news for Liberia and for the world. It is a tribute to the bravery and resilience of the people of Liberia and of the many African and other health workers who have worked hard for months to bring Ebola down to zero in Liberia. It shows that the fight against Ebola can be won, but it is an incredibly tough fight. The Commissioner also speaks about the need to keep supporting Guinea and Sierra Leone to help these countries also come to zero. And beyond that, the Commissioner stresses that we have to help 
all three countries in recovery. So the message that comes from Brussels is very clear. We will stand by the people of Liberia in recovery efforts. But there is something that the commissioner didn't write because he just simply didn't know and he is not together with us today. It is this incredible spirit of unity that we are experiencing here today. And I am confident that this spirit of unity will bring us ahead as we work towards recovery and that we will all open our hearts to the survivors and celebrate together with them. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, President of the Republic of Liberia, Mr. President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. On behalf of the World Bank Group, it is an honor and my great pleasure to be here today at the event commemorating the declaration of the end of the Ebola outbreak in Liberia. This tragic outbreak will leave an unforgettable mark in Liberia's history due to its severity and challenges never seen before. However, an old Tibetan proverb says, tragedy should be utilized as a source of strength. And it is the strengths of the Liberian people we are celebrating here today. Ebola free Liberia is the heroic achievement of health workers, families and communities, business, government and development partners. I vividly remember the time when the outbreak got out of control. Uncertainty, panic, death, isolation, anger are the words that describe the situation in those days in August. The laudable turnaround of the situation is the result of the strong country's leadership and everyone uniting to stop the virus from invite, inviting Liberia's towns and villages. Every case had to be found. Every contact had to be followed. And every sick person had to be cared of. I remember meeting a group of young Liberian community workers in district number seven in Monrovia after several family members of that community died how they cared about, how they cared about that family in isolation for 21 days. There are many, many stories like that. And these stories will need to be told, will need to be written and kept for the future generations. It was a laudable leadership and solidarity and we are proud to be part of it. The good news didn't come soon enough. We also use this time to pay tribute to almost 4,700 people who lost their lives during the outbreak, particularly to 192 health workers who paid the ultimate price for the service to humanity. Ebola Free Liberia is a milestone that means more than being free from the disease. It also means that we have come out stronger and more willing to work together. The Ebola response efforts united the country and partners in a unique way that has led us to this celebration today. These efforts need to continue. The Ebola outbreak has taught us the importance of strong health system and healthy people. It demonstrated how the disease can destroy the gains made over the years of development. Building resilient health system capable of dealing better when, not if, the next outbreak comes should be an essential part of the recovery. As the World Bank Group, we are proud for responding fast, being flexible, and for allocated significant amount of resources to the immediate Ebola response. The World Bank Group remains committed to working together with other partners 
and supporting the government and people of Liberia in building more resilient health system and bringing economic recovery, growth, and jobs back to Liberia. Thank you. Your Excellency, Ellen Johnson Salif, President of the Republic of Liberia, President of Togo, I give my due respect to all the civil authority here gathered. Your Excellency, this is a message from High Excellency Lamini Hosanna Zuma. And it reads, Your Excellency El Ellen Johnson Salif, President of the Republic of Liberia, African Union Commission congratulates Liberia on its Ebola free victory. On behalf of the African Union Commission and on my own behalf, I would like to congratulate Liberia on being satisfied by the World Health Organization this week as Ebola free. This is a victory of the people, the government of Liberia, the victory of all Africans and international community who rallied in solidarity to support the Liberian in this fight. I would like to passionately congratulate the Liberian President, Her Excellency Ellen Johnson Salif, for her leadership, courage, and direction. The government, the people of Liberia, for the overcoming the Ebola epidemic in this country. We would like to express our gratitude to the African leaders who rallied to, to the call made by African Union Commission for the health workers. This resulted to more than 800 African volunteers health workers being deployed in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Your Excellency, Although we may see a great improvement in combating the pandemic, the global community, however, must understand that the fight against Ebola is not yet over. As such, strengthening healthcare system, the surveillance system, should continuously remain at the core of responding to the disease until the African continent is free of Ebola. It will give us, as Africans, great pleasure to see Liberia Ebola free. This is testament to the notion that if we stand together as a continent, we can achieve great things for Africa, in this case, defeating the Ebola virus in one of the most affected countries in West Africa. Today is a particularly significant day for the African Union, which, through its African Union support to Ebola outbreak in West Africa, ASEOA, sent over 800 qualified African volunteers health workers. Madam President, with due respect to the civil authority, I request you to allow me to introduce to you some of the health workers here present. I say our team, stand up. Your Excellency, sit down. Your Excellency, ASEO has played a big part in the restoration of health system of the affected country. As a sign of improvement on the ground, we are now starting drawing down our volunteers of health workers. We would like to sincerely thank partners from all parts of the world who have been and continued to be instrumental in helping the affected country get to zero like Liberia today. We appreciate greatly the role played by the African private sectors we showed its solidarity with the affected countries by donating funds and embarking on other fundraising to support a our mission. Your Excellency, African Union will remain seized with the eradication of Ebola and all other contagious diseases. And in this respect, we are looking at establishing an operationalization of the African Center for Disease Control, ACDC. While Liberia's victory indicates that West Africa is near defeating the deadly disease, we must not cease to see that the complete eradication is through. It is now up to all of us Africans 
with the enduring support of our friends from international communities to collectively fight aggressively to curve the spread of Ebola and restore dignity to those affected countries. I beg to move, Madam President. Your Excellency, Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Mr. President, all protocol observed. Permit me to say a few words before giving the floor to my colleague, SRSG Graf. I'm privileged to have served in Liberia as the head of the United Nations during all phases of the Ebola epidemic and to stand with you today as we celebrate an Ebola-free Liberia. 4,716 people lost their lives to Ebola in Liberia. Accept our condolences. We mourn all who died. Two of them were unmill personnel. We comforted and isolated other UN staff who lost close relatives to Ebola and anxiously remained at risk themselves for weeks. We experienced the fear the uncertainty, the imposition of mandatory health routines, and the struggle better to understand this virus as UNMIL stood with you. Two other UNMIL personnel were among the thousands who survived, and we are very grateful for the care they received. Now there is an opportunity to create a new health care system with the foundations to mitigate future crises. Let me take this opportunity to recognize the important work that UNMIR performed in Liberia and continues in Sierra Leone and Guinea to bring the entire region to zero cases. I am also proud of the work of the UN mission in Liberia and the entire UN country team in support of the government-led response. The UN, NGOs, the AU, bilateral partners, and Liberian agencies worked collaboratively right across the country at the height of this complex crisis. When Ebola peaked in Liberia last August and September, something remarkable happened to turn around this raging epidemic. The decisive factors deserve close study. Perhaps the greatest lesson is to nurture the initiative of Liberia's communities. Liberians pulled together and the spread of the virus abated. We congratulate all Liberians and encourage you to remember, even through your pain, the pride of Liberia prevailing over all. Last week, I urged members of the United Nations Security Council and all of Liberia's partners to continue giving this country their steady support in the years to come. I am confident that this tragedy overcome of Ebola has inspired Liber Liberians to build an even more united and inclusive country with the strength of your communities at the very roots. Long live Liberia. Madam President, Monsieur le Président, colleagues, friends, all protocol observed. Today is a significant day. Today is a joyful day. The Liberian people have won their fight against Ebola through their resilience and through their solidarity. Together, we have gone through so much hardship and suffering these last many months. But now it is time, now it is time to be grateful, to be grateful for this dark cloud to have passed, to remember, to remember the thousands of Liberians who lost their lives and the many, many health workers who paid the ultimate price for their dedication to serve their fellow men. Now is the time to start the healing of a nation, its social fabric torn, families in mourning, orphans, all of us remembering the sirens and the horrible sights of August, September last year. 
But especially now is the time, Madam President, to be proud. To be proud of the communities who so clearly demonstrated the inner strength of the Liberian people. To be proud of the responders, the thousands of Liberians working with the communities, the social mobilizers, those working on surveillance, active case findings and safe burials. And we need to be especially proud of the survivors, the survivors who have fully overcome this terrible disease. Madam President, allow me also to say that we should be proud of the leadership, the leadership at every level, starting with you, Madam President. You gave us guidance, you gave us strength. But also my colleagues and friends of the IMS, your tenacity, your energy, you have been fabulous. I'm humbled. Of the solidarity between Liberia and its neighbors, the larger African community and the world at large, with thousands of responders volunteering to join your fight, building this incredible partnership that we are witnessing today. Today is the day to roll up our sleeves, to work together, to rebuild Liberia's healthcare system. As in every crisis, there's an opportunity. Our collective opportunity now is to ensure that the country has a healthcare system that is so strong, so resilient, that it will be able to deal with any future disease outbreak head on. Madam President, the UN system will continue to stand by you, by you and the government of Liberia, as you work to bring growth and prosperity to all Liberians. Today is also a day to remain vigilant, as the fight against Ebola is only over once the last patient in the last country has left the treatment center. I am confident that Liberia will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with its neighbors as you have done over these past months. Anmir is now very much focused on the last mile in Sierra Leone and Guinea, which involves strengthening a community-driven emergency response right down to the village level. Whilst today is indeed a significant and joyful day, we all know that Ebola is only truly over when we are at zero in all three countries. I therefore count on all Liberians to remain vigilant moving forward. Having said all that, on a more personal note, I now enjoy that famous Liberian handshake which I indeed find very hard to learn. Liberians, you did it. Thank you. Mr. Forhey Ganazimbi, President of the Republic of Togo. Distinguished and honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, First of all, on behalf of the Chinese government, I'm delighted to join all in extending the warmest congratulations to Madam President, the Liberian government and the people on the milestone victory over Ebola virus disease and the sharing the great joy and the relief of the nation. 9th of May, is a big day. It happens to be two V days. On the other part of the world, while people are celebrating the end of the World War 70 years ago, we are here celebrating a new victory of mankind over the unknown enemy from the invisible nature. We are honored to be part of the fight. This is a typical story of resilience. Everything started in a devastating way, and it ended up with fulfillment, confidence, and honor. But the process was rather painstaking. At this joyful moment, we cannot forget those thousands of lives lost in that disaster. We salute to those sacrificed heroes 
who died when trying to save others. This is another typical story of international cooperation. So many first ever and most in history happened in Liberia and West Africa in the past year. The strength of global partnership prevailed in the fight against the EVD. Um, I feel proud that China is a significant contributor to it. The victory and achievement of the fight are great and historical. Having the capability to contain the spread of a deadly infectious disease is a success not only of Liberia, but entire humanity. Every one of us has learned and gained a lot from this mammoth undertaking. Having gone through extreme difficulties hand in hand, people will get closer to each other. I firmly believe that after the fight against Ebola, we will see a new Liberia, more united and more resilient. China will always be ready to play its due part whenever, wherever our African friends, brothers, and partners are in need. Madam President, I would like to say, while enjoy the celebrating here, I find I got a sequel out of past year. That is, I still hesitate to shake hands. I think I do need a personal post-Ebola recovery plan. And I will take this as a good reminder that we should remain vigilant until our neighboring countries declare Ebola free. Thank you.